Welcome everyone, I'm Laura Shu, author of the Lightroom blog and complete Lightroom training on video available at laurashu.com. In this video, I want to share with you my approach to finding and eliminating duplicate photos using a plugin available for Lightroom. This plugin is called Lightroom Duplicate Finder. It was developed by Jim Keir and is available at lightroom-plugins.com. You can try it for free to find a small number of duplicates and then pay a modest amount for the full version. With the plugin, you get a PDF instruction manual explaining how to install and use the plugin, and you can watch Jim's video here for more information as well. For the sake of my video, I'll assume you've installed the plugin. Now I'm doing my own video on this rather than just referring you to Jim's documentation because I want to show you my process around using it as well as some tips and tricks and make sure that you have the Lightroom skills to fully understand it. When you launch the plugin for the first time, it'll write information to your Lightroom catalog, so do back up your catalog first. You can force the backup prompt to appear by going to Lightroom on the Mac or Edit on the PC, Catalog Settings, setting the backup dropdown here to when Lightroom next exits, saying OK or closing this dialog, and then closing Lightroom, clicking on the backup prompt, and then when it's done, restarting Lightroom. Now this may seem obvious, but the plugin only identifies duplicates amongst photos that are in your Lightroom catalog. So if you have suspected duplicates on your hard drive that aren't in Lightroom, you'll want to import them first. In the Import dialog, you'll select the folders that you suspect have duplicates, choose Add to just add them to the Lightroom catalog, and then uncheck Don't Import Suspected Duplicates so that you do get the duplicates in Lightroom. I'll cancel out of this. You'll run the plugin by going to Library, Plugin Extras, and then Find Duplicates 2. And it's here because I've successfully installed it. In this dialog, you're telling the plugin how to define a duplicate. Generally, I use the defaults here. I want them to have the same capture time and then the same camera lens and exposure information. Now my intention is not to go through every detail about the plugin. Generally these are the settings that I'm choosing. I don't want to restrict the duplicates to having the same file name because I know I have some, some duplicate photos with different file names and I'd like to find them and get rid of them. I also want to include virtual copies because I have a ton of virtual copies in my catalog that I don't need any more. So this is an opportunity to clean those out as well. But you certainly can, can check those boxes. Now my intention isn't to cover every single feature about this plugin, so I'm going to go with this basic definition of a duplicate. I'll click OK. I have a very small catalog, so it ran quickly. It found 28 matches. I'll say OK. And here in the Collections panel, I now have a collection set called Duplicate Photos. I'll click on the sideways triangle to open it up. These are smart collections. They're rule-based collections. So the plugin has rules for defining duplicates, and it pulls together all the photos in your catalog that meet these rules. All duplicates contains the 28 that it found. Now the photos have not been moved into a smart collection. These 28 photos still reside in folders up here. The collection is essentially just a list of those that I want to see. I'm going to focus on this all duplicates collection but notice that the plugin has created several more collections. These are subsets of the All Duplicates that are intended to split things out in a way that may help you make some decisions. If you want to look at versions that have the most editing or the least editing or that are the largest or smallest, for example, you can come to these subsets. And again, Jim has more documentation on that. Now, in terms of sorting through these, I've set up my grid here to give me some information to help me make the decisions. You'll notice that above my thumbnails, I have information. Now in Lightroom on your computer, you may not have any information there. I'm going to hit the J key just to show you that in collapsed view, you don't see any information. Hitting J again gives me my flag and my rotation buttons, and then hitting J a third time gives me information. There are four fields here that you can set up to display what's going to be useful to you. This first one, for me, I've set it up to display what folder this photo lives in. You can click on the field itself and choose folder. In this second one here, I've chosen dimensions. I want to be able to see if this is a full-size version of my photo 
or just a small one I created for output. This third one here, I've chosen file base name, which is just the file name without the extension. And then fourth here, I've chosen file extension. So I know if it's a JPEG or a TIFF or a RAW file. Now you may find that other information is useful, but this is the way I do it. So let's take a look at these three photos here. These last two are of the same dimensions as my originals. This one here is just a small output file. It happens to be a TIFF file. My original was a JPEG. Now ideally, I'd like to be able to just hit the delete key on this one and delete it. But you can't delete files when you're in a smart collection. There are two ways to approach this. One's kind of the tedious way, but I'll show it to you. The idea would be to go to the folder that this lives in and delete it from there. I can right click on it and choose go to folder in library. That jumps me up to this folder with this photo selected. Then I could hit the delete key and delete from disk so that it's removed not just from Lightroom, but also from my hard drive. I'm going to cancel for now. Once I do that, then I would just go back to the all duplicates collection. This wouldn't be here anymore. And then I'd continue going through my photos. Now another approach is to flag the photos you want to delete with some piece of information, such as a reject flag, and then at the end, delete all of your rejects from your catalog. You could use a reject flag, you could use a color label, a red color label, for example, or you could add a keyword to the ones you want to delete. The keyword could be to delete. The important thing is that you assign a piece of information that you haven't used anywhere else in Lightroom. If you assign a red color label, but you have other photos in your Lightroom catalog that have red, red color labels for another reason, you're going to end up accidentally deleting them. Now here in grid view, I don't see my color labels and flags down here in the toolbar. So I'm going to click on the downward triangle here, and this goes outside of the video screen. I'm going to choose color label so that these are displayed. And then if I wanted to work with flags instead, I'd click on the downward triangle and choose flagging. So I'll go with red color labels. I'll click on the red color label. This one's got red, which means eventually it will be deleted. And then I'll move on to the next two. Now here I have two that are the exact same dimensions. One's in my original shoot folder. The other one's in a miscellaneous folder. And they have two different file names. I also see from the badges here that this one has keywords and this one doesn't. They both have GPS information. I'm going to go ahead and delete the one in the miscellaneous folder. So I'll give that a red color label. And then I'll move on to the next set. I'm not going to go through all 28 more, but just let me do two more examples here. So this one is a raw file. It says CR2. This one is a TIFF file. And I can see that I removed the dog's leash. So this was one I worked on in Photoshop. This is another TIFF file with the dog's leash. So I created that in Photoshop, I guess, but I certainly don't need to keep it around anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and give that one a red color label. And then this one also is another TIFF file that I created in Photoshop. I'm going to give that a red color label. Now I could certainly open them in Photoshop to make sure I don't want to delete them. Another thing, of course, you can do is go ahead and look at this in loop view so that you can see it larger. I'll go back to grid view. Now I think you've gotten the idea here. I wanted to show you one subtlety that I've noticed with this last example. Now the middle one is just a small version, so I'm going to go ahead and give this a red color label. But this first and third one, as I look at these thumbnails, they don't look like the same photo. I'm going to click on this first one and then hold down the control key on PC or the command key on Mac and click on the last one here. And then I'm going to go to survey view to see them side by side. So these two are, in fact, different photos. The reason that they show up as duplicates is that they were shot within one second of each other. The capture time part of the rule for identifying duplicates only goes down to the second. So in this case, I wouldn't te technically consider them duplicates. I certainly could flag one of them to be deleted because I don't think it's worth keeping around anyway. But I wanted to point that out. Now that I've sorted through all my photos, the next step is to pull up all of my red labeled photos so that I can delete them. I'm going to start out by going to All Photographs. And then here in the Library Filter Bar, I'm going to go to Attribute, which is where you can filter on flag status, stars, and color labels. 
and I'm going to choose the color red. So I'm seeing all of the red labeled photos in my catalog. Now if there's any chance I used red for anything else in my catalog, this would be the time to scroll through these and make sure that I really do want to delete these. If so, I can go up to Edit, Select All, or Control or Command A, and then I can hit the Delete key on my keyboard and choose to delete from disk. Now let me show you how you would filter on flag status and on keyword in case that's what you chose to use. I'm going to click back on the color red to say that I don't want to filter on that, and I'm going to click on this third flag, which is the reject flag. Now I'm seeing just my rejects. I'll click back on the reject flag to turn that off, and then for keyword, you would go to metadata. In this first dropdown, you would choose keyword, and I'll click and drag on the edge here to make this longer. And then you would select the keyword that was your signal to delete, select the photos, and delete them. You can turn off your filter by clicking back on All, and then clicking on None here. Now at any time, you can rerun the Duplicate Finder plugin to do another check and update these numbers. I hope you've enjoyed this video on finding and eliminating duplicates. Find out about new tutorials by signing up for newsletter updates on my blog at lauraschu.com. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel. I'm Laura Shue.